Okay, John, part two. So we're going to now check the adrenal survival, deep survival, hidden deep survival, and see what's going on there. And hold, which is interesting because they didn't show up initially as well until we had all the organ stuff online. Mm. Interesting. still do bit, little bits of kinesi on your clients, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. If, whenever it feels like it's, it's needed or they're yeah, breaking nice. up. And... Do you use your counselling kinesiology much? I feel so. Yeah, it good. It just comes out naturally. I yeah, beautiful. I need to get my chart up though. You know, the developmental chart. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You don't have your screen. Oh, there's no space. Where would I put it? Where would I put it? Are you on the door? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like the green door. <laughs> I probably should move that one and put it up there. Because I don't really use like that one ever. It on the roof. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, that's a funny idea. There's a whole bunch of space up there. <laughs> So yeah, so there's uh, survival deep and hidden deep survival and the adrenals. So I'm just having a look in the PBSS now and seeing what's showing up. <laughs> yeah, so the sensory, okay, so we've got all the gut, pretty much everything gut showed up. Uh, and the sensory nervous system is overloaded, which means your nervous system within the gut is the thing that's really heightened at the moment. And it does take time to heal, and I know you're taking all sorts of good stuff. Okay, first little area showing up is the orbitofrontal cortex. This is to do with conflict. So it's it's uh, about wanting to go out there and wanting doing something, but the world's telling us to do something else, or it's about lies, you know, the little white lies we tell people and then we think about them forever, or basically it's about conflict in our brain that upsets our equilibrium and our peace. Mm. Almost like gut emotions. Hold out. <laughs> like I bet you need to say you don't get that definitely. You know, because it's all just kind of physical moving things. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely just breaks it down. Yeah. Do you remember, I can't remember whether it was you or whether it was another Cracky who was doing, um, did you ever learn the raindrop technique? No, oh, I experienced okay. it, Rachel. Right, oh, it might have been Rachel, yeah, okay. Because I was uh, telling the class yesterday morning that, um, Gabby was once on the table and she was really highly stressed and she was about to have a have a essential oil massage. And I wanted to see what it would do because the claim was that, oh no, it calms all your nervous system down. So of course, me being a kinesiologist, I wanted to actually check. And sure enough, her adrenals were overloaded. There was survival, deep survival, <laughs> hidden deep survival. And when she finished the massage, I came in and checked her again and they were all clear. So it really did. Yeah, it really did change the change the survival stuff in the body by having such a big dose, because it's a big dose, it's not, I can't remember, but maybe it's nearly a hundred drops of essential oil directly on the spine. Yeah. You know, so that's a chunk of energy going in there. And- uh, I just wanted to do that course. Mm. Well, Rachel could probably teach it to you, if you could find her. Mm. Um, I'll think about it. So there's another reticular activating circuit. This time it's in relation to running on noradrenaline. That's the assumption of long-term stress. And then wanting to go hide, you know, go do the boy cave thing so that we don't have to be <laughs> out there in the world and dealing with humans. 
this is just the initial thought of yeah, what this is the beginning of. Yeah, yeah, because sometimes people are out in the world and they're actually fine once they get there. Is that what you're thinking? Mm. Yeah. Well, something has told this human being <laughs> that uh, it's dangerous out there with people. People are tough. People will create conflict. Okay. Uh, the next one is a reticular activating system, but it's more to do with the organs and the muscles. So let's see what we have to stack in here. Yeah, right. It's pretty much the abdominal area. So this whole area has tension and stress in there. So can I just get you to um, tense tight, make that area tight. And relax, and in here, just tight, tight, tight. And relax, and tight, tight, tight. And relax. And more on the right side, just to energetically. And more on the left side. Beautiful. right back in the reticular activating system again because sometimes it's not so much about right so this time when you're feeling discomfort in your abdominal organs it uh, switches on your reticular activating system so that you're focusing and directing attention to it and it's hard to let it go so again that doesn't really help us to yeah, that seems to be vigilance as well. So just being aware of your of your gut, because obviously in a perfect world, we're not aware of our gut. It just goes and does its thing and, and we're not supposed to be aware. So this awareness creates vigilance in the nervous system, which tightens everything up. It uses a whole bunch of extra energy. It'll be chewing up your redox signaling molecules and your stem cells and stuff because you'll then be creating localized damage. So everything you can do to calm it down, whether or not it's, um, you know, even things like baths and foot baths and detox patches and, you know, good old sunshine and exercise and anything that feels good, you know, to get a lot of that feel good hormones and endorphins going. The alternate nostril breathing. Okay, so now the sympathetic nervous system. So something about that little combination has activated the sympathetic nervous system and what that does is switches off your rest and digest. So once again, we're in a bit of a loop of stress that's shutting down your gut. So and again, an old pain and punishment circuit, just holding the gut to ransom. Thou shalt not have a good time. Thou shalt not relax. <laughs> Us to keep ourselves tense and tight and vigilant. So let's go back. So none of the organs are showing up in the clear now, but because the sympathetic nervous system tends to mess with things, I'm going to ask the same things we asked before. So in relation to optimal polarity. Okay, so stomach. So in relation to optimal polarity of the stomach. And hold. Hold. 
That could be second stage stress. Okay. Clarity of the stomach. And hold. Oh yeah, it's not unlocking. Okay. And optimal polarity of the spleen, pancreas, meridian, meridian. And again, hold in, hold in, and hold in, and hold in. Okay. So where do we need to go then? Something electrical. Thymus tapping. Big rates. Okay. And I'll just run the combo. So stomach. Spleen, stomach, spleen, stomach, spleen, stomach, spleen, stomach, spleen. In. Hold in, yeah. And hold in, yeah, okay, so that's working. There's the next little combo. Checking none of those seem to be playing up now. Okay. Optimal oxygen levels. Optimum oxygen levels. So large intestine, ox optimal oxygen levels. And hold up. And hold up. Hmm. One of the other things that this doctor said, hold back, was that any time our cells hold back, don't have enough oxygen, uh, they're targeted by the body for destruction. And one of the ways that the body does that is by laying down fungus and candida on the cells without enough oxygen, which is sort of interesting. So when there's a lot of candida or fungus in the body, it's often because the cells don't have enough oxygen or their polarity is out and the body has gone, okay, this is the way we do it. So in rainforest, that's why we see so much fungus, because it's trying to break down the dead tissue. Anyway, so he actually had pictures of tumors that where you could see the candida and the fungus all over them. Anyway, very cool. Hmm. Interesting, hold and hold. And hold, and hold, okay, optimal oxygen. Oh, 
Yeah. Okay, so this time kidneys showing up. So, um, I mean, obviously, if we're not digesting stuff further up the digestive tract, then the kidneys are going to be overworked. And I can never remember the number, but I think we release about 60% um, of toxins out of the bowels and about 40% from the kidneys. Do you remember? Yeah. 60% through the bowels and 40% through the, through the kidneys. And, I know it's a 60-40. Anyway, so uh, kidney energy. So this is about oxygen. Hold. Ah, because, hold, there's another little connection. The kidneys, the pancreas, and the small intestine all make bicarb soda. But by the time we're 40, we're making nowhere near enough to keep ourselves alkalized. Yeah, so once again, it's why it's such a nice little cheap body hack. In the morning, I put some in Teddy's water bottle. Haha. Is it like a glass? Or just a teaspoon? Yeah. Yeah, you can hardly taste it. Hold up. Hold up. Beautiful. Yeah. This keeps waking up. Oh, little darling. treatments on tomorrow? I don't know. I haven't seen Barry, but he hasn't come back. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. So that was uh, polarity and oxygen. Let's check optimal pH through individual organs more pH through individual organs. Ah, so heart's showing up. Uh, okay. Hold down at the wrist. Hold down at the wrist. It's not unlocking. Hold down at the wrist. Hold down at the wrist. Yeah, so it's in second stage stress, the heart. And that one works in tandem with the small intestine energy. And hold up. And hold up. And hold. And hold. And hold. Yeah, so they're both in second stage stress here. So uh, the heart and the small intestine in relation to the pH. Okay. Anything more in the PVSS? Yep, something else. Orbitofrontal cortex again. So again, that's about that conflict, the emotional conflict, love versus hate, or will I, won't I? Just that, just that, those annoying little uh, messages we get in our brain that just irritate us. It's about irritation to the brain, this conflict. Hold out. It's part of like crop control in there, isn't it? Kinesiology. No, it's just like the, the conflict. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I remember um, Dr. Flavio Catagiani, um, when I saw him about five, six, seven years ago, and he was saying that one of the things that he found with endocrine disorders, because he's an endocrinologist, uh, was that any anything that we're stuck on is worse than having any solution that's a bad solution. Any solution is better than being stuck on something and not feeling like we can move forward. So we're better off just making a decision and doing something. Yeah. Because <laughs> he often, uh, I mean, he was he a was, uh, really good speaker. And he, um, he was talking about a lot of marriage problems. So people would come in with, say, libido issues or something like that. And if they were on their own, he would always say, well, are you attracted to your partner? Because um, he said, well, sometimes it's not the hormones. <laughs> <laughs> Except in med school, they were taught not to act. He's down in Brazil, I think. And, well, yeah, Brazil. And he was, they were told pretty much not to go into any emotional gear whatsoever. So never to go there as a doctor. And he just refused to do that because he said... 90% of libido is emotional. Anyway, not that that's our problem, John. Sorry, <laughs> off on a tangent. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, conflict. You're better off doing something than not doing something. Okay, so the reticular activating system to do with uh, muscle tone and stress and tension is showing up again. Okay, so where do we need to go this time? Our sacral. So we can use the chakra combo. Okay. Okay, so I might um, stop here and start again. No, no, don't.